ready to start programming. This one is, okay, this presentation is not for you. Um, we got Kurt, Nick, and then we're going to have mine. So those that ha uh, haven't gotten their hands, uh, or, uh, hands dirty yet, hopefully this will help. Uh, by chance, was anybody able to get connected and get to the FTP site where they could follow along? If, okay. Uh, this might be one that you can do so. If not, hopefully the PowerPoint uh, is something that you can refer back to if you wanted to, 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 to give it another shot if you're not able to follow along tonight or today. What the objective is going to be is we're just, as Adam mentioned, we're going to build a mass emailer of uh, custom invoice notifications. Uh, we want the, need the ability to view customer invoices. We're going to then select those customer invoices, and then we're going to uh, send the selected invoice notification um, that were chosen. Um, did somebody raise their hand and want to follow along? Okay. Um, if you do want to follow along, we'll give it a shot here. Um, there should be, um, I'm not sure how to get there from here, but you should have a customer invoice spreadsheet in your FTP site, along with a cheat sheet. So for somebody typing, um, you'll be able to cheat, copy that. So um, you can copy that down. Um, Actually, you don't need to uh, take that back. You won't need to download the, the uh, spreadsheet, but there is a cheat sheet if you wanted to um, copy from that. So we'll uh, we'll give it a shot here and see how we do. And I don't know how to use PowerPoint. So, then I guess we could just use the other screen. Um, the pieces are going to be that spreadsheet that's already in your, your demo folder. Uh, and we're also going to do a simple design or what they call the, the, the markup and uh, a little bit of sample code here. And then we also have some functions that we're going to use. Uh, Nick has already covered the, the two here, but we're going to add a send, a save, and a select all function uh, to work with our Bislio app here. First thing that we want to do, if you haven't gotten there already, is start with the custom builder for those that may not uh, have caught where, uh, how to get there. Uh, it's this little icon here, it looks like a couple of gears, and then uh, you'll see that on the far right you'll have a custom tab and then all you have to do is click select. So I'm going to do just that and click my gears. Create bezel, custom, and then we select and then you'll see something that's very uh, familiar here. First thing that we want to do um, is you'll see up in the upper right hand corner there should be a sorry should be a space for the bezel name and we're going to name our bezel email invoice notifications. And I can't stress this enough. If you want, you can go ahead and save. And now we have our name in uh, bezel. And it doesn't have to, the name doesn't have to be exact. Now, before we do anything, um, first step is that we're going to want to connect to our data, and we're going to do that via a data subscription. And how you may have noticed that we do that is we simply go to data subscription, 
where our tools are listed, we right click, tap add new, and then after that, um, we go to our new data description. There's going to be a default name, which is kind of really hard to see on this screen, which is going to be data sub zero. Uh, that then is going to give us the option to edit that data description. And that's what we're going to do next. And I'm just going to pop over and do that. I'm going to go to data subscription, add new. And I'm going to just, being that I'm, I know from just what we're going to accomplish, that we only want the single data description, I'm going to stay with the default name. And then I'm going to go to that, right click, and edit. And you've seen this screen a number of times. So here, as we've done before, I'm going to choose the Bezalio Remote Data Broker. And can anyone guess what connection we're going to use? <laughs> okay. Thank you. So for those that wanted to really just catch some Z's, they can. <laughs> Um, and then out of this list here, we're going to use what we've used before. We're going to use the Excel plugin resource. That gives us a choice. Probably most of the time, you might start with the get data, and that's what we're going to start with for our method. And we don't need or have any arguments. Uh, actually, we do. I take that back. Sorry. Um, we do have the file name. And if you happen to have a cheat sheet, you can go ahead and grab that. If you don't have the cheat sheet, then I'll give you some, a moment here to, to fill that in. And I'm going to use my demo 25 folder. Sheet name is going to be the default that you'll have for Excel, which is simply sheet one. And then we have first row column names is a question, and we're going to say yes to that. And just to show you here, This is actually our Excel spreadsheet right up here. So we have our column names, and then we have three rows of information. So that's what we're going to be pulling in with our new subscription here, data subscription. And then what's nice here is that we can verify once you have all that information. And what's nice too is that it should not give you this save and um, save and close. It'll actually give you an indication what might be wrong with your connection string too as well. Um, and then it'll give you another chance to then uh, go back, change any sort of um, modifications up here, re-verify it, but this is your ultimate goal and that is to be able to see the information as we do here. We see the same information that we have in our Excel spreadsheet. Anybody not have that? Exactly. With that, then, we've got this completed. We could either save, but we're ready to actually then just save and close. <clears throat> OK, and that's just a confirmation that we verify our information. How we're going to view our customer invoices, because we want to be able to see those invoices to be able to select them and then ultimately email them, we're going to simply use a table. We saw Nick use this before. It's the hover table. And as you can see here in the slide here, all you have to do is click and drag. And what's nice is we're starting with an empty um, palette here, so we can just click and drag it anywhere, and it'll default for us on the first row. And this is going to be then just a sample of what we should see once we click and drag the hover table over to your design view. So 
the, the fact that we're dealing with the design or the markup, we're going to find our hover table under the markup snippets. And I'm just going to scroll over a little bit. And if you remember, we have a tables folder, and then we'll find our hover table. It's going to be the, I think it should be the bot, actually, it's going to be the top one. And again, since we don't really have any code here, we can just click and drop, and it's going to put it at the very beginning of our, de our design. Now, before we do anything with our code, um, I'm just going to jump ahead a little bit. We want to be able to change our headers, which is going to be the top section, and then we're going to change our data source for our little um, four section here, which what this does is it goes in for each row or for each record, it's going to display our detail. So this is in essence, our, our loop. So these three sections we want to modify. Now, when you're modifying these, you might not remember, okay, what are the names of my, my columns? So one thing that you can use, which Nick covered, was the raw data view. So again, going over to your, your markup, we can go ahead and click and drag that over. But before you do that, um, one thing I like to do is make sure that I have my cursor or a row of where I want to place my click and drag item. So now that I've got a spot for it, I can go over to my raw data view again under the markup, and I'm just again going to click and drag, and, and I don't have to be too strategic with this. I can just drag it at the bottom and drop it there. Now, obviously, we have this item here, which is simply place data here. So anytime you see something like this, which is an indicator, uh, this isn't actual code. This is just a hint. We want to go ahead and get rid of that. So you can go ahead and select the place data here and hit delete. Now. What is it that we want to preview? I don't know. No. Correct. Now, you gave the wrong answer, which is good. Which we will have simply by grabbing this little item here, which is our connection, our data subscription. Here we do have to be a little bit more strategic. We need to place it right in the middle there where we took out place your data here. And then when I release, that's exactly what you're going to do. And this is where our data is. And this is what we want to preview. So now that I have that in place, um, I can actually do a preview. I can either click on the tab at the top or click the preview bottom at the uh, button at the bottom. Now notice that there's not much to see at the top here because we haven't done anything, but we do now have a confirmation uh, or a little preview of what our information is. So that way uh, I have a, a way of referring to the information so that it now uh, with this, I can actually go back to design and make those changes. So again, we're going to change the three sections. We need to. Uh, 
change our headers, our data source, and our details. So we we'll simply begin with the headers, and that's going to be where you see these little TH. Um, and that's the, uh, the table header section. And notice that we here in this example here, we have a row for each. And that's exactly what we're going to do back in our custom builder here. So no, noting or knowing that we need five columns where we only have two, simply so going to copy one of these rows. and give myself five rows. And if you're a little bit anal retentive, like I am, you may want to straighten things up. And then I'm simply going to select can get the first, you can get the header file, can you, as a variable, instead of actually putting it in? Um, I, we, probably, yeah, we could do that. You could? Uh, I think they're right, the header, no. Can we get that the header from, from the variable? So that we don't, because uh, then you just pull the first bit. Because then you could change the header in Excel file, yeah. and then your column header would change. That's true. That's true. Now, can I keep in mind this is just a. I think that's what you did. Yeah, you oh, could, yeah. If you're talking about getting it from the database, yeah. you can't. You have to set the property of your subject language. And for me, I'd like to think of the title, because technically it comes back as a property of an object. You just get those properties. Okay. Um, there's code to do that. I mean, if you really wanted to be, And I'm also just going to maybe take a moment and do a save. Okay, so we completed our headers, and then we have a section for the body where we're going to tell that we need to cycle through each row and then display each of those items for our data. Now, what's nice is, if you notice in our code here, go back to the designer. Right there, they leave a little space for whatever we want to cycle through. And this NG4 is going to cycle through, and it's going to say let item. And item is actually going to become the housing for this, this value, if you will. Of, and we need to complete this, this phrase here, so let item of, and again, we're going to go back to our data subscription. We're going to use our data sub zero, and just click and drag. Notice that we do need to be a little bit strategic here, place it at the very end, just before the double quote. And now we've told it what we need to then cycle through. And then here you can see the 
fact that we've got our column heading sent invoice customer amount email, we're going to do the same thing for our item. So I'm just going to do a quick copy and paste here. And probably could have done this whenever, it doesn't matter. But now I need to then, as I did before for the header, for the detail, I need to add a couple rows. So I'm just going to copy a sample of it. Go ahead and add those as well. And go ahead and click on preview. We should have um, our header and detail. And then, of course, this bottom section, which again will eventually go away. Does anybody see a problem with maybe, um, well, what we wanted to do at first was to be able to come left? And that's with our our column here, we have a, a sent column that we added, uh, zero meaning that it hasn't been sent, a one would indicate it's more or less a, a true false. So what we can do in this case, is add a checkbox for our sent column. Now we don't have a checkbox in our markup section just yet, but what we can do is we can actually take and use our text tool here and drag that over and drop it. And then this is going to be what's dropped into our, de uh, our design mode. And then what we're going to do is we're going to change some items here. We're going to change the type from text to checkbox. And then we're also going to change what value is being represented here. And it happens to be everything in between the double quotes here. So we're going to re replace what the default here, which is simply a, a variable. We're going to replace bezel.bars text value with item.sent. Let's go ahead and go back to our design view. So what we're going to do is we're going to replace this field here. So I'm going to clear that out. This is our first column in our detail area. And if I go to my inputs folder under markup, You'll find a text tool here. And what I'm going to do then is bring that over, and I want to put that right in between the TD. That gives me then the syntax that I need for what starts as a text input. And again, we want to change this to checkbox. And then remember, everything in between the double quotes, we want to go ahead and get rid of that. And we want to put our item dot sent option. It is good. It is case sensitive, so make sure that sent has a capital S.
Now, with this new input checkbox using the same field from our data source, go ahead and preview. And now we have checkboxes instead of zeros. And note, too, that as soon as you click the checkbox, your information is instantly updated. At least within the, the realm of our, our bezel here, we'll get to uh, updating it in our Excel spreadsheet. Now notice it's a little different here. You'll get a true false, but when we do the update, um, as long as we have a, the format defined in the spreadsheet, um, it'll honor our ones and zeros. But notice how those change there. And another thing here too, um, with just the, the function of our, or the objective of our app here is we don't necessarily want to maybe have this column read as send, maybe we should have it read as send because that's actually what we're going to do. So in this case, maybe we could actually go back to our design and just change the header to reflect what it is that we want to do with our application. Though our field will stay the same. So that looks a little better. So the next thing that we want to do is we're going to add a button and it's going to be our <coughs> email button. So as we've seen before, we'll go to our buttons under a markup section. We'll put that at the very beginning. So what we'll do in our design view, we'll, we'll make sure that we have a row to place it. Here's an example of what will then be the result of our click and drag. And then the, really the only thing that we want to change is, as you saw earlier, is the button text. So we'll go ahead and change the button text from that to email. So then we go back to, to design view. And under buttons, we're just going to use the standard button. But, but as I said before, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and clear a row or make a placement so I can click and drag it there. I'll take the standard button. And again, strategically, strategically place it on the first row. And then I'm going to grab and select button text and change it to email. If you want, simply preview, and it does a nice job of placing the, uh, the button for us. But now if I click on it, even after selecting, nothing's going to happen. <coughs> reason for that is we simply have a button, but we don't have any function for it to follow. And then that now takes us to where we are going to add our three functions. We're going to use an email function, a save function, and also then a select all function. Now, if you look at the function section in your design view, you may already see an on button click, which was created by default when we simply clicked and dragged our button. Being that we're going to have more than one function, it may be advantageous. Now, unlike our data subscription, we only had one, so we could use the default there. Here, it may be worthwhile to do a rename. All you have to do, again, is right-click, select rename, and we're going to change it from on button click to email. But we also then have to note or go and, and pay attention to where we clicked and dragged our, our button. 
and note that it referenced the on data change, and we'll have to update this as well. So we'll take a look at that. We're going to update it from on data, I'm sorry, on button click to email. So we need to change that as well. So you'll see here's the reference by default on button click. And then here's the function that it created by default. So we need to change both of those to email. So now that we have our button and our function lined up and renamed, we can talk about a little bit of what we're looking to do. For the email section, uh, function rather, we want to do this for each invoice, which means we need a way to then cycle through and view each invoice. So we're going to use a for loop, which, which is kind of hard to see here. So we're going to use that function, and we're going to drag that into our function editor for email. Now, how do we get to that function editor? We do edit. That'll bring up our function editor for email. And then again, we're going to simply click and drag the for loop. Now, this is going to be in a different section. The reason being is we're not dealing with the, the markup anymore. We're actually dealing with the code of the bezel. So under our code section, you'll see a for loop. Again, because we want to email for each invoice, so we're going to loop through those, and we're just going to click and drag that over. So again, right-click, edit. That brings up our function editor for email. And then I'm going to go ahead and collapse markup. I'm going to go to my code section, and that's where I'm going to find my for loop. Simply click and drag that since I'm dealing with an empty <clears throat> workspace here. One thing I think we may change for this is if you notice the little braces here, this is actually what it's going to perform for every row or for each invoice. So place your cursor there and give yourself some room to work. So I'm just going to go ahead and bring that last bracket down, and that way now I have an empty row here to work with. <laughs> One advantage is we didn't rename our data sub-zero, and again, being that we're only working with one subscription, we're able to then just stay with the default here. If we were dealing with multiple data subscriptions, we would have to pay attention to this, but we're lucky here and we can just keep this as is. Would you tell me if you want? Yes, yeah. okay. okay, now we're going to go one step further in that not only do we want to email for each invoice, we technically want to only do it if the email was selected. So we need to go through each invoice and then we're going to check it if it's been selected. And then if it's been selected, that's when we're going to do the email. So we're going to use yet another code. In this case, it's going to be an if statement. Now, if you remember, we gave ourselves some room here for our for statement. And so it's that middle section here, just <coughs> between these two little brackets here. I love that. Um, that's where we're going to click and drag our if statement from our code section. So I'm going to go back to design. Here's my if statement. And I'm going to drag that right here on what should be row two. Uh, one thing you may too, just sometimes it helps with readability. If you hit the tab key with it all selected, it'll give you a nice little indent to show that the if statement is a subfunction of the for. <laughs> now, 
Now, a couple of things that we need to address for our if statement, and that is we need to configure the if condition. Uh, and we're simply going to check to see if the condition is true or false. Now, here you'll see that what we are going to check for is data, and we're going to check to see if certain data is true or false. Now, with the bezel.data.data sub, that is a collection of all of our information. What we need to do is, and if we refer to our for statement here, you'll note that it's using a variable i, which starts at zero and then continues until it no, no, uh, doesn't uh, go past how many rows we have in our, our uh, data set. And then it increments it by one each time. To help keep track of that, we're going to use that variable i, which is in essence the index to keep track of which invoice that we're looking at to see if it's been selected and if we want to then send that invoice. So what we're going to do, and you see before, this is more or less an array here, we're going to add in bracket that i variable so we can tell our if statement what row that we're currently testing for, and we're going to test to see if it's true. But then we actually need to go one step further, and that is we know what row we're at, but what part or what field of that row do we want to test? And in this case, we want to test the sent field. So we're going to add the i variable or index and then also identify what field it is that we want to test to see if it's true. And again, that's going to be the sent column. And we have an item here, so it's going to be this column here. Anytime it's one, it's going to be true. If it's zero, it's going to be false. So our condition, I'm going to go ahead and highlight that. I'm going to clear it. And again, I'm going to grab my data and I'm going to replace it. And again, just put that cursor right there just after the parenthesis. <coughs> and if you remember, we have to do just a little bit more because this is all of our data. We're going to use square brackets and a lowercase i to keep track of what row that we're looking at or what index. And then we're going to use a dot cent to indicate what column or what field. And then we only want this to occur when the sent value is true. Now, to maybe help see what's happening in the background, <coughs> you can use uh, this function here, which is <coughs> uh, alert, which simply just sends you, uh, maybe for at first for uh, debugging purposes, just a little insight as to what's happening in our function. So what we're going to do is we're going to add in between our if statement this alert and in between our alert, we're going to identify what it is we want to view. Now, instead of seeing the sent, we're actually going to take a look at each time that this finds a true sent, we want to be able to view which invoice was selected. So let's go back to design. And I'm going to get the tab key, just get the proper index. Just type in the word alert. And then we want to see whatever we have in parentheses. And we can do one of two things. We can click and drag and add our square brackets and, and the I. Or I'm just going to select my sent column. I'm going to copy that, simply paste it in alert, and then change sent to invoice. So again, what's going to happen is we're going to cycle for each row, and then if the sent field for that row is true, 
we want to then just do a, a simple little message box that will show us what invoice item was selected. Just going to scroll down here. You should have a verify option. And if everything compiles successfully, we now have a save option. And we can go ahead and do a save and close. <coughs> So if you want to do, it's Brian just going to go back and add a semicolon. <coughs> so you probably don't want me doing your, your app program. All right. We'll go ahead and do a, a verify once again. Save and close. And then preview. And then what we're going to be able to do is go ahead and select any or all. And then now when we click email, we just kind of have a preliminary test that, yes, we are cycling through the invoices, and we're only identifying those invoices that have been selected. So in essence, I should only get one message box, which I do. But if I change things up, click the button, it runs the function. Now I should see one and then three. <coughs> yeah. <coughs> now, we don't have a click and drag just yet for the SMTP plugin. But the good news is uh, we do have the Beslio support. So this also shows you here that we can actually depend on the support for what we want next, and that's the actual email part or the email function. In this case, we're going to use SMTP. And as you can see here on the right is just a little bit of breakdown. Most of these, if not all, are probably self-explanatory. But what we're looking for is the usage. And what it is is we want to actually get this information. So an easy way of doing that is if I go back, you'll see Beslio support. If you click that, it will open up another page for you. And what we're going to do is we want to go and let's dig in on the documentation. So let's click let's dig in. And by default, we're at the Beslio plugin. So if we scroll down, notice that we have an SMTP option. <coughs> Pretty straightforward. Used to send, oh, it's supposed to be fixed. <laughs> Used to send emails from within Beslio. So then if I scroll down again, introduction, installation, configuration, and then what we want is the usage. So go ahead and copy everything in the usage section. Now that I have that copy, <coughs> and go back to my de design, and 
again, where we want this SMT function is in our email function. So I'll go to my email function on the listing here, click edit, <coughs> and it's up to you if you want to keep this alert. I'm going to go ahead and keep the alert there. I'm going to add a line so that I have a place to, to paste what I've just copied. And then I'm going to use control V, or if you want to right click and paste, you can do that as well. Um, again, if you care about alignment, you select the lines that you want to align. And I just hit the tab key and it kind of just aligned everybody. But it does, it's not important if you don't get it aligned. <coughs> now, what's going to be really cool for those that are actually following along, you should, you should be be able to then set this up to where you're going to get an email from your new bezel. So go ahead and once you've got this pasted in the from line, select everything between the double quotes where it says your user at yourdomain.com, put in your email address. Now, we can do a little bit more. Now, you don't have to do everything that I've done here, but we can do a little bit more than just change the from. We can actually change the subject <coughs> and the body, and if you want, you can even actually do HTML. But we're going to keep it basic here, and all we're going to do is we're going to add some text, and then we're going to add some data. And then for our body, we can do the same thing. Oh, yeah, I did. Oh. The two. You could do that, yeah. Yes. Okay, this was a test for everybody. <laughs> <laughs> we actually want the two. to be your address. And the from, we actually have something set up for you, is going to be www-data at saberlogic.com. So again, if you clear it out, um, we're just simply in the email editor for the email. And again, change the from to www or dash data at saberlogic.com and then put your email, just copy and paste it for the, uh, for the two option. Just use SNTP relay, right, on the server? Yeah, yeah. Close it down after that. <laughs> 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 oh, yeah. That's my bad habit there. It shouldn't matter for the two, okay. So if I would have just followed my uh, my PowerPoint slide here, but anyway, that's what it, it should look like. And then, uh, again, going back on this, we'll, we'll go ahead and do the subject and body next. So, I'm just simply going to copy everything here, which says this is the test email. Put in the word invoice. And then I have the option of adding dynamically some data here. 
And I already have that spelled out. If you remember in our alert, we are already viewing the invite invoice ID or the invoice for this row. So I'm simply just going to copy that. and paste that here. Okay. Oh, I'm sorry. Oh, I got you. Thank you. Yeah, yeah. I'm sorry. 101. Okay. And I can then just copy this to the body if you'd like. Um, and then um, add I think I had a little bit more than that. Um, Thank you. So again, it doesn't have to be exact, but except for the plus signs, we definitely want those in between our data items here, and then of course our strings here at the beginning and at the end, uh, especially for our subject here. And you don't have to do the whole So you could just like copy this paste it at the end and then change invoice to a mark. And that will give you that. just to make it a sentence is all. So I'll go ahead and I'll, I'll add that too. Just so.
Okay, when you feel comfortable with your entry, then go ahead and verify and then save and close. And then when we preview, you'll get your, if you've left it behind, you'll get your message, but then most importantly is you should then get an email. I got an email for everybody to see it. Of course, I made a mistake looking at my email. Actually, I want to go into the. I just forgot to change my sheet of copy and paste to amount. So I make that change. Verify, save, and close. Anybody not get Last item that I think we'll just look at here then is, okay, now that we've sent the email, how do we then tell Excel or save our changes to Excel? As you notice, as I refresh the information, I've lost my send option here um, or indicator here. So how we do that is Again, let's go back to Beslio support, and we're going to grab yet another um, grouping of syntax here that we're going to use for a, another function. And so I'm going to go back to Beslio plugins. If you have it open already, if not, remember you have the Beslio support here in the lower left-hand corner which would then take you to Let's Dig In, which will then take you again to the plugins. And in this case, we want to look at the Excel plugin. And what we want to look at here is the usage not to get all the data, but to write the data. So once you're in the usage section for the Excel plugin, Go all the way to the bottom, and it's this code here that we want to copy. But after we copy it, okay, you got to make a spot for it. We do have a new function. So what we're going to do is we've got some...
Try not to, to uh, change or copy anything else, and we still have our code in our clipboard, but we want to go ahead and we want to add a new function, and we're going to simply name it save, and then we're going to paste our code in our save function. So under functions, you want to add new. The default name is, is font zero. Right click on that. Rename. Save is going to be our new name. Hit the enter key. And as we did with email, we right click on that again and we have now the option to edit. We're in the function editor for save <coughs> and paste. Now we do the home stretch here, but we do need to make some changes here. <coughs> For the file name, we want to change it. And notice here we need to literally identify the backslash. So that's why we have the four slashes here. So if you can, you might be able to strategically use what's there, but we want to change the file name to prod backup. Main spring and then demo to match her folder and then customer invoices dot XLS X. Did you give up on me? I got it. You got it? Okay. And then we also want to change the sheet name to sheet one because that is the sheet that we were using. You may note that it defaulted to sheet two. So change your sheet name as well. And then we also need to then identify the sheet data. And that should be an easy click and drag for you. And then just a note here that the JSON String, stringify is simply something that just converts the data to a string. Thank you. I, I, I know. It, it shouldn't be this hard, but well, I guess I do have Yes, thank you.
And then here, notice that it says bezel data, my Excel data. We don't have that, but what we do have, so we'll go ahead and grab that, take it out. We can then click and drag our data container here. So now we've got a save function. We've got the code to save it to our Excel, but now what we need to do is how do we get there? Uh, if we look, well, actually, let me take you back. If you've done this coding here, go ahead and verify. Save and close. Preview. Right now we just have an email option. So what we can do is actually edit our email function that's linked to our email button. And after it's done everything that it needs to do, we can then simply say at the very end, go ahead and fire off our save function. And you can do that with a simple click and drag. Once we have the save added to our email, let's do verify. Save and close. And now when we preview, and I'm gonna send another email, but the difference is, once I click preview again and it refreshes, it saved the information. So I've now written back to the Excel spreadsheet.